All right, we're moving on to item three, building consolidation presentation. Thank you, sir. Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like I never left. Exactly. Um, can you see us now from the gallery? Can. Can you? Yes. Look at that. That's an improvement, That's Lori. That, we're starting on a high point for 2021. Well, welcome, everyone. I hate. I apologize to have my back to this side of the council and this side, but um, as I said, we're doing council in the round, so we're trying to accommodate everybody's view. Um, this is a work that has been gone going for a couple of years. As you all know, uh, the master plan and joint facilities had done a lot of work on town properties. They did a pre presentation, I endorsed it to the public. Uh, that was done in the, in the chambers, October 19th of 2020, and that's on the town manager's site for anybody who would like to go to look at the master plan overarching that BL did. We then, in November, did some smaller enhancements in town. I wanted to do before this and before the budget. Those were the uh, garden plots, the basketball courts, and the pond. Those are done. Anybody wants to look at that, that was done at the November 9th meeting as well, and that's on the manager's site. Um, we have been doing concurrent paths with roofs in the town, and that's a, a great uh, term that I think Gina and both uh, Donna like to use, and it's accurate. We not only did or interface through the Henry Barnard roof, but tonight and in the last meeting, if people want to look at more of the details at our last meeting in December of 2020, uh, we are now embarking on funding to do the roofs of the Eli Whitney, Whitney and Hazardville Memorial. So while we couldn't, given the terms and, and the conditions out there in the environment, do a referendum, we didn't stop because the roofs need to be done. So we had always thought, well, let's do what we can within our budget. So these are three roofs that are being under, underway. Tonight, this piece of the puzzle is building consolidation. Joint facilities have looked at the big picture. We've been looking very closely. We brought Jeffrey uh, on as deputy director to start a look at facilities. What do we need? What are the costs going forward? We've got a lot of information. And so this evening, we're going to have a presentation on how we can uh, combine services at existing buildings and sell property. Hallelujah, praise the Lord, sell properties and generate revenue and reduce cost and increase efficiency. Um, just so you have a little preview of what's coming up next, because this has really been a global plan we've embarked on over the last couple of years. Um, within the next couple of weeks, maybe two or three, we'll be back after a long, hard fought on Eversource property out by the you know North River Street. We'll be meeting with them to hopefully attain that property. We'll have an update, and also uh, there will be a meeting very shortly with the Department of Transportation. Uh, we're having discussions with them on the train station, so I'll have an update for you either the next meeting or early February on both of those matters. Uh, once we conclude this evening, uh, and maybe there'll be follow-up at the next meeting in January for follow-up questions, uh, we will then start the budget process. Uh, we've already commenced to look at that, and we're gonna really concentrate this year on some CIP uh, priorities that we had to defer last year that I think we can accomplish this year uh, and yet be fiscally responsible. That will address other things in the budget um, that we will do there and this hopefully will be done and then lastly i think that we'll be in a position to go to our residents and propose to them in november of 2021 a road and roof referendum project and i think after this evening they're going to see that you all have been very prudent stewards of their money that we've done the smaller projects we've done consolidation tonight we're going to address some long-range cip problems in the budget and then i think we'll have their uh respect and their confidence to do and continue Continue the roads project, which will close the loop for 20 years. Of course, we'll have to start again. And then on the concurrent path, do the other roofs that we need to do in town, plus the schools. And I think they'll see that, wow, they've really, really thought this through. This is a plan that will put the, the town of Enfield on a, uh, I think, very sound footing uh, for managing our resources for the next couple of decades. So having said that, we're going to move on to the uh, presentation of consolidation. We'll put the first graph up and I'll just give you an overview then I'm going to turn it over to the very capable staff who have worked very very hard on this so Jeff if you can put just the first the kickoff and I will have this for you um, in a handout form so you'll have it to take with you and we'll put it up on the website tomorrow And the next slide should be the four properties, and here we go. 
these are the recommendations, and I'll just give you the overview, and then they're going to go into detail. Alcorn School, upper left, will be moving or proposing for your consideration social services and selling 110 High Street. Moving youth services as part of the La Mania closure into this facility as well. Next, if you look at the bottom left, how this will impact the Senior Center, we would like to re relocate the transportation office from High Street to the Senior Center. Uh, the Enfield Annex above uh, right is going to now be the home of the newly relocated Recreation Department from La Mania, and also moving building and grounds, closing and selling 52 Prospect Street in the process. And then lastly, the bottom right, our acquisition or our rental and uh, future acquisition of the Enfield Express, which is going to allow us to consolidate and move the tax and assessor's office, which is partially there, from Town Hall, there is a permanent location, and create a shared conference space, uh, state-of-the-art video meeting center in Town Hall, where it will be centrally located for everyone to use. Uh, we're also going to touch upon St. Adalbert's, Mr. Bellick, and we'll have the date of that. I know that was in December, I believe he came and made the presentation at St. Adalbert's to renovate the gym for tournaments and for theater. And lastly, I'll just touch upon the Strand is also part of this near La Mania. Uh, I'll just say it now in case I forget. Um, Nelson is in negotiations with the state to get his money uh, that would hopefully pay for the demolition of that property to be able to merge it with La Mania to market it fairly soon. So this is going to be a high altitude presentation. I'll give you the handout at the end, but also what we'll be sending you in the next day or two is about a 40-page, in-depth, nuts and bolts, all the details of this plant, square footages, reasoning, processing, so you can really digest it and look at it. Um, and then the second meeting, January 16th, when we come back, maybe we'll do a six to seven to say, all right, what other questions do you have? This is what we are concerned about, and then maybe give us the Thumbs up, I hope, and the green light to implement this plan. Tell you what's amazing about this, it's going to save us a lot of money. It's going to be highly efficient. Uh, and also, it does not require us going to referendum because the money savings and the amounts we're going to spend are minimal compared to what we're going to get. And you're going to see by the end, we can do all of what you're going to see here, not in 10 years, not in five, not in three, not in two, one year action because everybody's been working so hard on this and all of the committees have for years so with that uh i turn it over to you kasha thank you chris welcome kasha just name and title and uh you have the floor please kasha for cielo assistant town manager uh so the format of this presentation it's uh, jeffrey uh donald and i are going to be taking turns talking about each uh of the parts of the plan uh so i'll kick it off right now um, so the first component of this plan is to move the departments currently in the Lamagna Center to the Enfield Annex uh, and the former Alcorn School. The Lamagna Center, as you know, was built in the 70s and needs millions of dollars worth of work Passing done through the and Jeff, are you going to be following along here? He's going to go to the next one, actually. Thank you, Chris. Okay. Thank perfect. you, Jeff. Thank you. Um, so as I was saying, um, the Lamania Center uh, will need millions of dollars worth of work done through the CIP over the next 10 years only to maintain status quo without any modernization. It only has seven parking spaces, which is completely inadequate for the activities being done there currently. Moving the de departments that are located there will allow us to close the Lamania Center and market the property to allow for transit-oriented development. Um, as part of this move, so recreation would be moved to the Enfield Annex under this plan. Um, it envisions that our DPW staff will renovate the offices in the D-wing of the building to accommodate the rec staff. All recreation programming will be moved to the annex, which is currently the site of their Tons of Fun summer camp and the children's summer entertainment series. The annex also has a gymnasium, pool, recently renovated fields, and the tennis courts that can be used for recreation activities. So now I'll turn it over to Jeffrey to talk a little more in depth about the, the slideshow in front of you. So recreation currently resides on mainly the lower level of Lamania. The lion's share of uh, recreation's programming is, you know, more or less spread across town facilities, i.e. Uh, gyms, pools, fields, et cetera, uh, with the exception of the gym and a classroom at Lamania. Um, Lamania is mostly used for administrative functions for recreation. Uh, these administrative functions are pretty much limited uh, in staffing level and, and, and parking just from the physical size, uh, the footprint of the building and the parcel, the location. So trying to grow that site is uh, uh, challenging. 
Um, so increasing staff there and, and additional programming would require a move or splitting uh, that, that department up across different locations. So what we're proposing uh, in this plan is uh, reutilizing the D-Wing at the uh, Enfield Annex. Uh, moving recreation into the uh, Annex's D-Wing provides more room for future expansion of the department in terms of staffing and parking. Utilizing the old Fermi main office, it's an easy location, especially being designed uh, to already host uh, staff and visitors when it was a high school. Um, reoccupying the space requires a small investment as the core infrastructure is already there. This is already built as an office space and it, it doesn't really need much more than just kind of reactivation, if you will. Um, multiple year-round and seasonal programming does go on at the Annex and a lot of it is hosted by recreation. Uh, with the overall space the Annex has to offer, uh, th there's still plenty of capacity for this move. So this renovation cost is going to be approximately twenty-five thousand um, dollars. The five-year capital investment savings, which we're going to attribute half of the capital uh, to youth services, half to recreation, is eight hundred twenty-seven thousand five hundred dollars. And by by closing this building out, we'll be also saving forty-seven thousand five hundred fifty dollars in operational costs for FY twenty-two. This work will be done by. B and G staff primarily as it will all be done in house. It could be done uh, if we get started in February. We should be have we should be able to move recreation in before March because it's been it's it's very the core the core is there. It's just some sprucing up and some little uh, carpentry along the way. All right. Thank you. Next slide, please, Jeffrey. So next, I'm going to go into the changes for social services, including youth services, which is currently housed at Lamania. So this plan actually moves youth services along with the rest of social services to the Alcorn building. So Alcorn is currently the home of the Board of Education, education including the Transitional Learning Academy. So we've had many conversations with Superintendent Chris Strasick to ensure that the Transitional Learning Programming and Board of Ed Operations would not be impacted negatively by any of these moves here. Under this plan, new services will move into the Alcorn building. In addition, we are also proposing to move social services into Alcorn with youth services into Market 110 High Street. Youth services is a component of social services. Unfortunately, over the past several years, the programs have existed separately, which did not allow for any efficiency or streamlining. The director of social services is looking forward to having both youth services and social services together and to benefit from the co-location. So this co-location will allow for parents and caregivers to receive services for multiple family members at, more conveniently and at once. In addition, this will help the department have shared social workers on site and other staff that are able to cross train um, on things such as their department-wide crisis response team and to more effectively and efficiently address the needs of our residents. Enfield Television, which is currently located in Alcorn under this plan, uh, would be moving into an existing space of the annex, again, better utilizing the annex. Um, transportation is also a key component of social services. And unfortunately, Alcorn is not large enough to accommodate youth services, social services, and the transportation office. So under this plan, we move transportation to the senior center. The senior center was originally built, built with dispatch and offices for dial ride, and it will be really easy to move back there. The change allows all our transportation vehicles to all reside in one place, which is different than now they're scattered across town, and will also streamline the day-to-day -day operations for the staff there. Uh, this will not impact senior center programming in any way. It is not public facing. Um, and lastly, with Alcorn, um, as a part of the plan for the Alcorn School, we're also proposing several outdoor improvements, some of which the town council has already reviewed and approved. So in November, the council voted to expand the community garden program, including adding community garden plots at Alcorn, approximately 20 or so. The town council also approved the construction of a new outdoor basketball court that will be in place during the spring of 2021. And as a part of this move, the students both involved in new services and transitional learning academy will have access to both. And uh, lastly, this plan also envisions expanding the parking lot over at Alcorn. Currently, we have 78 parking spots at the school. Our plan envisions expanding the parking lot to 122 spots and six accessible spots to accommodate the new youth building. I'll turn it over to Jeffrey to go over uh, the PowerPoint detail with you. So currently, youth services is uh, based out of La Mania Center. Uh, youth administrative functions are, are mainly concentrated on the second story. Uh, and that youth programming is kind of spread between the kitchen, the gym, the lower level, 
uh, upper level with the, the big great room, activity room. Um, so this can be a chaperoning challenge. Uh, having kids and programming on two levels happening simultaneously, uh, this can be an issue with the staff trying to keep track of everything. Uh, also, the restrooms on the uh, second level are really inadequate, so staff have to also escort kids back down to the gym restrooms when they have a lot going on. Uh, so again, this is just, you know, poor flow. Uh, La Mania in general has parking and other related flow concerns, and the parcel itself doesn't allow for much expansion, which would limit future development. So we're proposing to move uh, youth services to the lower level of uh, Alcorn. Youth moving to the uh, Alcorn lower level, um, also in conjunction with social, uh, social services, reunites the, the into one sole department, uh, making it just administratively easier. Utilizing the gym, the kitchen, uh, and uh, the, the whole level, uh, it's already existing, so we don't really, you know, have to re reinvent those types of large uh, spots. Um, the main entrance that we'd be reutilizing would be off the bus loop, so that'd be that uh, northwest corner. Um, nice rebranded entrance. The other nice aspect of this location is uh, youth is still in the Thompsonville area, and it connects with the neighborhood sidewalk system, so it's convenient for walkers. And with all this uh, going on with the parking lot, the traffic pattern even the existing conditions, it's just better traffic flow. So the cost of this renovation is, uh, is estimated at about $395,000. We would be saving the other half of the um, capital investment over, last, over the next five years. So we begin saving about $827,500 in capital costs. We'd also be saving about $47,550 in operational costs for 22. Doug Wilcox provided an estimated tax revenue for this property. Uh, we were out of there at about $33,000 per year. We would have to do some, uh, have to have this designed and go through permitting, but the work on the youth services side will be handled primarily through building and grounds since mostly it is taking existing uh, large office spaces and making them into smaller um, private offices and the like. The contractor portion of the show would be primarily just for HVAC or any other data usage. And we could, we are expecting to get this done before August 1st. And I'm just going to add, when we talk about estimated tax revenue, you're going to see in the following properties, we actually give an estimate of what we believe and we have done uh, for Cindy's benefit, our realtor. Um, we've talked to our uh, consultant about uh, the marketable prices uh, and what we've talked to Della and John about what the revenues would be. This is the lowest. This is basically, if you were to, and you'll see demolish the Lamont, you have about an acre, maybe you want to say it's worth $100,000. However, you're not putting a house, you're not putting a market, it's a mixed use, could be a multi-story um, structure. So that's a minimum of 33000 It probably would be triple or quadruple that yearly, what we'll be experiencing, because I'm hopeful to have businesses and residences there. So we, but again, we always go and err on the side of being conservative, and we're fully transparent, and we don't over-predict. So that's the minimal per year that we would generate from the site. Gentlemen, proceed. And lady. So again, um, part of this, uh, social services plan moving to Alcorn, you know, this is just where they currently are, 110 High Street, the shaded areas, the space that they occupy. Um, social services and transportation are both at this location. The challenge here is the parcel size. Uh, horizontal expansion uh, is pretty much uh, una unavailable to us without either doing something with acquiring more land or if we're going to add building space going vertically. Um, service programming in this current configuration is also limited due to the facility size. Um, without relocating more divisions of social services, we can't take on more staff or more offerings, if you will, at this particular site. It's, it's pretty much maxed out. So we're proposing, again, uh, social services to move over into uh, Alcorn on that lower level, on the same, you know, same level with youth services, reuniting the department. In this particular plan, we're going to be utilizing the old cafeteria and the band room where uh, ETB currently resides and the community room now is. Um, the rebranded main entrance for social services, again, is directly off that uh, bus loop. So just that improved traffic flow, easier getting in, um, with, especially with the parking lot uh, being in right in the back. 
um, that southwest corner. Uh, the bonus for this move is not only, you know, reuniting the two departments, it's still downtown. So we're, we're not leaving downtown. It's uh, only marginally a little bit more east from where it currently resides on High Street. So this is a really good positive. Um, and then transportation. Uh, they're, they're really using that one little area at 110 High Street. Again, the uh, parcel size is the big challenge here. Um, we are decentralized. We're there at this location. The buses can't congregate. So that means that uh, drivers are going out, picking up buses all across town, coming here, meeting with a dispatcher, getting route information. Uh, and this just kind of, you know, uh, forces this ad hoc approach to how we manage, you know, magic carpet dial ride and all this other stuff. Uh, so in this plan, we're, we're putting them over into uh, the senior center, revitalizing uh, where dial a ride was uh, thought into this plan in the shaded areas. Uh, these are the two rooms we'd be uh, honing in on moving a supervisor and uh, two dispatchers. And there's also other uh, bonuses to this particular move. The senior center has a tremendous parking lot as compared to 110 High Street, so we can get everything in one one area but again this parcel is just so much physically larger uh, that any expansion with transportation or the senior center in programming or staffing um, we have the ability to grow and develop the site and again with transportation moving to the senior center there shouldn't be any issues um, that the residents uh, or users of the senior center would ever notice and then here are some of those exterior improvements we were talking about um, in this uh, particular rending, rendering, uh, we were depicting a new parking area over uh, the location of our uh, current, uh, or used to be basketball court. So we're expanding that area to have uh, more parking. Uh, it, it's about 44 additional lots over where we are uh, currently. Um, again, uh, there's a lot going on with the projects that were already approved with the, the basketball uh, court being built um, towards the Garden Street side. Uh, we have the playscape. Um, so we have the community gardens coming in. So there's going to be a lot of activity. It just seems right now uh, to do a, a to do parking here just seems suiting not only just for all this extra use at the site, but just with all this extra you know community programming. This is really becoming a community uh, center with everything that's happening. Uh, so again, what's nice about this site? We're downtown. We have great interconnectivity with the sidewalks. Again, we have sidewalks <laughs> in Garden Street, New King Street, Enfield Street. So we don't lose that downtown Thompsonville pedestrian friendly uh, environment. So the renovation of, uh, of moving special services, whoa, Meckling. Uh, okay. The renovation costs about $415,000 to move social services to Alcorn and transportation to the senior center. It would be the five-year capital savings of not doing any work on 110 High Street to be about $235,000 the operational cost savings of closing that building would be $57,000 for FY22. Uh, our estimated tax revenue for that property is about $15,000 per year. And we had an estimated sale price of approximately $400,000 for that property. Now the Alcorn School, this part of the, of the Alcorn School renovation is gonna have, require an architect. We're thinking about four months to get through design and permitting. We allowed for two months for bidding uh, for public bid because a, a lot of that work is going to have to be some specialized work that buildings and grounds cannot do, but they will also be working on what the ETV room and converting that into the uh, reception and office areas and other things. They'll be working in concert with the contractor and we're expecting that to be done before December 1st to move to get social services done. Transportation, the design and permitting is just uh, very small design work and permitting through, well, through the building department and that would be completed again in-house through uh, building and grounds with with them again another December uh, completion date. Perfect, thank you. Jeffrey, next slide, please. All right, the next part of the plan here envisions closing and selling 52 Prospect Street, the current building and grounds facility. So, so this property is surrounded by residential housing, which is not ideal for the lot equipment and early start times of our B&G operations. Uh, buildings and grounds staff would be relocated to the annex, 
which will be closer to the public works complex and in turn will be easier to manage staff and support functions will all be centralized. Uh, the B&G Woodshop is actually currently located at the Annex already. Um, and this, uh, the Annex location has the space uh, needed to build an equipment shed outside for um, all the B&G equipment that right now they don't have a place to store. So again, uh, this is their current location on Prospect Street. You know, this site is pretty much just maxed out. Uh, the challenges we are facing with this location is expansion, uh, especially when it comes to equipment and vehicles. Items like plow trucks, field equipment, snow removal equipment should be inside and, protect, and protected from the elements. Uh, keeping the garage open that we have uh, currently where we have the uh, old horse drawn area, there's that uh, black roof to the uh, side of the picture. Um, we're putting things in connex boxes just to try to keep everything that's seasonally active in an enclosure where we can readily get it. Um, you can kind of just tell on this, you know, overview of the site that with all the equipment and trucks, there's really nowhere to go. Uh, additional parking for employees. Uh, you know, if we were to grow this site, it, you know, there's really nowhere to move. So again, uh, we've already started pulling out other parts of the division. We're, we're already occupying the annex with the wood shop HVAC and electrical. So that's the only way we can kind of manage uh, buildings and grounds. And in this plan, we're proposing to put everybody at the annex. Um, a lot of items are already there. Again, we have functions that are existing at the annex, the wood shop, electrical, HVAC. Uh, and we're going to be targeting a couple things here. One, it's really uh, the old varsity locker room. There's a, a about 5,000 square feet. It already has um, the old coach offices, it has showers, lockers, storage areas, um, a couple areas we can renovate for break rooms. Um, and it has a lot of uh, footprint. It's a larger footprint than where we were at uh, Prospect Street. And again, this is kind of a straightforward renovation. The, the core is there, the IT, the electrical, the data. It's more of a reactivation, a uh, little light sweep up and clean up. Uh, the other big part of this plan is uh, putting uh, 10,000 square foot equipment uh, facility at this site. Again, this, this site is very uh, nice because the annex has about 50 acres of land. So this is a really great site to you know, really develop, address our parking concerns, and you know has a lot of potential for other things. Okay, so the renovation cost is approximately $354,000, but the majority of it is gonna be like, the, like Jeffrey was saying, the Butler building that would hold the, uh, the equipment Try to get all the equipment in there and have something large enough that would house that. Now, we would save about three hundred eighty-five thousand dollars by not investing in the fifty-two Prospect Street any longer, and our operational savings for twenty for FY twenty-two would be be off sixty thousand dollars a year. Uh, if we were to sell the building, we'd be getting about sixteen thousand dollars a year in taxes and approximately a four hundred twenty thousand dollars sale price. Uh, this will require some design again some use of an architect for design and permitting for the building uh, it requires some time to go out to bid and again that the majority of the work is going to be done by the contractor uh, erecting the building but there is some light work uh, that PG will do inside to get that uh, the locker room and a crew leader area and things done and again we're trying to we would try to endeavor to have that done by January 1st So the next part of this consolidation is actually a plan for the Enfield Express. It's hard to believe that our lease for the Enfield Express began only about six months ago. It's been a tremendous success during this first year. In this plan, we are moving the Office of the Tax Assess Assessor and Tax Offices to the Express. With all the staff in one place, tax and assessors, assessors will be better able to act as a one-stop shop to serve our community. So in the place of the tax office downstairs in the town hall, we plan to construct the multimedia conference room. The town hall is a centralized location with ample parking. In addition, having this conference space on the first floor would allow us to securely contain access to the building. The space would be renovated with the help of ETV to ensure that it's compatible with live streaming of meetings when needed. So we are keenly aware of how there's not enough meeting space in town hall for committees, commissions, and even our own staff, unfortunately. For example, subcommittees of council, joint facilities, beautification, historic district, and Commission on Aging could all benefit from having this additional available space for meetings. Thanks. Jeffrey, go ahead. 
Currently, you know, tax and assessors are, are co-located uh, co between the lower level of town hall and the Enfield Express. Uh, this provides some staffing concerns for administrative oversight, splitting a division. Um, the current location in town hall is easily congested, especially in the tax seasons. Uh, the customer service area is very small and the limited uh, area pushes lines, especially again in the tax seasons, you know, out the doors and into the hallways. This can be very disruptive to other staff and department functions. Uh, plus it just makes, you know, a nightmare uh, moving everybody around in there. Um, storage and workstations, customer service bays, we're, we're kind of locked into that 1200 square foot area. Town hall is already um, loaded to the gills. So really any expansion at this site, at this location uh, is, is where we're done. Uh, so again, um, Enfield Express, uh, great site, close to Town Hall, large building, 4,500 square feet, has about a 1.7 acre size lot, lots of parking. There's a lot of good things going on over here. And one of the best things, it's designed for high volume uh, transactions. It was, a, it was a bank, so it's designed to move people in and out efficiently and effectively and, and handle money safely. Um, What's also nice about it being larger, it enables us to do new things that we didn't do before, um, like the, the leaf bag pickup and other uh, resident-based interactions that like would need an in-person uh, transaction or people that would like to come out and do in-person things. Uh, this site also has a drive-up. Uh, drive-up is something we could never do at Town Hall in its configuration. So having that uh, contactless, uh, especially during this pandemic, this contactless drive-through that's just convenient in general, uh, this has a lot of stuff uh, going for us that makes us a little bit more flexible in what we can offer our residents across town. All right, so at the at the Express, uh, before we get started on on the renovation cost of it, there is that uh, the potential for expanding the parking between between Town Hall and the Express. So with the property just to the west um, of the drive-through area, we could probably fit about 55 to 60 more cars uh, for parking there too for future expansion as well. But uh, the renovation cost for uh, moving 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 assessment and revenue to the Express and outfitting the Express is about $81,000. Again, we have to do some um, just some permitting in-house and again, uh, it'll be all constructed in-house using B&G staff and we hope to have that done before May 1st. And the conference room that we're going to try to uh, look at building in the lower level of the tax assessor, what we've come to find out that, you know, there's never enough meeting space across the town. That always seems to be something between staff, committees, um, agencies. You, you really can't get enough meeting space, it seems to be. Um, so, again, converting that tax assessor area into a modern video, video conferencing center is going to be a real huge benefit and asset to the town. Um, similar to the Enfield room and its capabilities uh, with the Wi-Fi, the streaming, the conference calling, um, we're just short in these. And then, you know, modern business and, you know, through the course of this pandemic, you know, these, these types of facilities, that type of capability, they're, they're not going anywhere. Um, they're here to stay. And it's just a really good thing to have um, at our uh, disposal. Uh, what's also nice, it's located on the lower level. So, you know, that whole meeting area between the Enfield room, uh, where, where we'd be, um, in the tax assessor's office with this new AV conference room, um, it kind of isolates all that kind of foot traffic in one spot. So we're not moving through the whole building and going upstairs and causing all sorts of uh, you know, noise and disruption. And then again, we have plenty of parking in the back of town hall. Uh, it's already centrally located. Everybody knows where it is. So it's just a really nice thing to do. In that and this renovation cost is projected at about 43,000. Uh, and it would be done in concert with the assessment of revenue move to the express again. So with, uh, with the completion date of, of in May, that, that would be our goal is to get it done before May 1st. And this last piece of uh, this consolida consolidation plan impacts the St. Adalbert's gymnasium, which touches our town hall property. Um, so we currently have an option to purchase this gymnasium that expires at the end of next year or to this year at 2021 and of 2021. So the gymnasium is historic for anyone who's who's been there. They know it's absolutely huge. It's approximately 9,800 square feet and can be used for tournament style basketball and other sports or activities um, in town. 
In addition, it has a beautiful large theater that can be used by local groups to promote arts in Enfield. I've actually spoken with one of the local nonprofits uh, who have said it would be great for big scale musical productions that might be a little bit too large for their current uh, small theater. Um, and as, as you are all aware of the future goal for the land behind the town hall is to create Higgins Park, including a walking trail, playscape, and open green space. As far as the vision for Higgins Park, we hope to have a large community pool. When renovating, if we go forward with renovating this gymnasium, we anticipate that the final product would have lots of rooms for preparation for the future swimming pool. And I'll turn it over uh, to Jeffrey with that. So Standard Albert's uh, gym located on 90 Alden Avenue. Again, this is a very large gym, um, just shy of 10,000 square feet, and it's in a uh, great location. It abuts uh, not only um, our town property behind the softball field uh, in parking lot, but it also abuts the back of uh, the Enfield Express. So um, it's just, it just a really great location. This area being, you know, eyed for uh, development of Higgins Park. Um, especially with a community pool, it just gives us a place where if we were to put a pool in, a place for infrastructure, a uh, place to reutilize restrooms, a uh, place to get water and other utilities. Um, again, this is a large gym with a stage and this off the stage there's changing room. So this is a very uh, nice setup. Uh, it can be used for tournament style basketball um, or other sport related sports, or again, for cultural events with those, with those changing rooms. So uh, with this particular project and its location, it's really it's a really interesting one and this renovation cost is projected at about four hundred thousand dollars we're expecting i'm sure it's going to take four months or so for permitting and design and another eight months for construction with with a with a completion date by february 1st of 2022 <clears throat> Thank you. And with that, we'll uh, turn it back to Chris for any closing remarks. Well, I think we had one final slide with John Wilcox just to do the summation, I believe. There we go. Excuse me, you're right. Yes, there we go. Okay, so this, uh, this slide basically ties together all the individual projects and, and puts it all into one overall cost summary. Um, as you can see, we have uh, the recreation move, youth services, social services, uh, transportation. The renovation costs will, will be, as I stated, uh, handled in-house as much as possible um, and we probably uh, you know, require some additional overtime and those estimates of additional overtime costs are included in these amounts. Um, the five-year capital investment in avoidances, these properties that uh, the three properties that we're talking about um, have been in town for a while. They have uh, several projects that are, are going to be expensive coming up in the in the near future, such as uh, HVAC upgrades, electrical upgrades, uh, flooring, um, roof replacement for 52 Prospect Street, uh, roof repairs, and, and those estimated costs uh, over the next five years are as shown on there. Uh, totaling about two million two hundred seventy-five thousand. The annual operating cost uh, of avoidance is obviously if we're not uh, in those buildings anymore, um, we don't, we're not going to have those costs. Uh, they include water, uh, electric, natural gas, um, buildings and grounds costs for like um, routine maintenance um, and uh, snow plowing, uh, clearance, mowing, etc. Um, including, and they also include the uh, custodial services uh, cost to uh, clean the buildings on a daily basis. Um, so if we have any uh, any additional questions from you, or turn it back over so, to Chris, and we can continue. Yeah, we'll, so, uh, I'll wrap it up, and then we can open so up to Chris, questions. You, so I think before Chris finishes, I mean, I know Chris is going to release a detail, that, so I know if some of you may have some, let's hold off on our detailed questions, you're going to get the information. If you have a high level question, I mean, again, the essence of time, and I think we'll get our questions together, be prepared for the next meeting, because I know you're gonna have that out for the public. And uh, I mean, again, just a high level question. I mean, Chris, yeah, what I'd like to, the detail. What I'd like to just share is that I think because of all the hard work that's gone before right. um, with the joint facilities, with the master plan, um, with council looking at it, I'll tell you, 
me three years ago, well, it's almost, almost going to be three years for me in May, it was overwhelming, daunting, and almost a task I didn't think that we could even grapple, that we could even undertake. It just seemed there was so much, it was just so overwhelming that where would we begin? Well, with all of these different projects bring in, like I said, the baby steps, some of the smaller, the medium, the long range plan, this falls well within it. And again, this, I'm giving you the high range. We have all the details. We have all the weeds. We're into the weeds. So the beauty about this is we're not going to say, well, okay, Chris, as you heard, if we give you the green light, now you got to do all the work and what, you'll come back in two years and we'll start it. We can have all of it mostly done within a year because we have answered all those questions. That 40-page, I call it the nuts and bolts document, is done. We didn't come before you half-cocked. We came, and I'm going to hand out this presentation to you. We'll put it online. Then you'll have all of the information to look at for the next meeting. But I'll tell you, Mr. Mayor, the only thing I'll tell you is that we were very transparent about this. We know it's going to play the $1.3 million. Over five years, we know we're going to save $2.2 million because we know we have those costs projected out now. The You might say the annual operating. Well, we're still going to have some of those. We are going to have some, but you have to understand the annex, we're heating. We're air conditioning it, and it's empty. The Alcorn, all of these areas we're heating, it's empty. We're air conditioning it, it's empty. We're, this is going to save all of those operating costs and, as we said, the exterior maintenance and reduce custodial because we already have people there. Um, the other thing is one of the most frustrating things I have as a resident or a person is trying to get a darn parking spot. You, know, you want to go somewhere and you want to attend something or find something, at, and you can't get a darn parking spot. Every one of these buildings has no parking that we're getting rid of. Um, and also, I'll just it's like the old movie I love, Money Pit. They're all money pits. All those, we have documented. That isn't an estimated cost of 2.275 over five years. That's documented. So we're going to avoid that. And you're just throwing good money after bad because the buildings are too old. But what I can tell you is because of the thought that's gone into this, all the extra parking at Alcorn, the superintendent is thrilled, by the way. I won't speak for Mr. Dresick. We have a great working relationship. We've consulted him every step of the way. He's thrilled that those students are going to have not only gardens, but a basketball court. They'll have appropriate parking there now. If you want to go next door, like we say, for uh, the tax assessor's office or to pay your taxes or you have a question, you know what it's like in the bottom lobby here. People lined up, frustrated, upset. Over at the Enfield Express, you can drive through two windows, or we have five uh, walk-up windows that, that are going to be operational for the bank with ample, beautiful spacing and, and, and seating areas for people to enjoy. Building and grounds, my goodness, those guys do a miraculous job. Can you imagine the job they're going to do when they, when they actually have a facility that they can come to work and, and not squabble over a parking space and not know where they're going to put the equipment from the fall to the winter? Uh, all of these things, social services, again, to bring social services and youth services together under one roof now, they're going to be so much more efficient. This place Plan. It, I, I think it is perfect. I'm being fresh or, or cute, but we nothing's perfect. But this is pretty darn close. For the work staff has done for what we have uh, to bring this all together, to be in a position for the savings, the efficiency, and to be able to do it in a year at that cost. That's pretty remarkable. I will tell you one cost that isn't here. It's in the detail on the 40 page. Um, I don't want to leave hanging out there where you say, okay, La Mania, now we're going to have a town blighted building, right? Move everybody out, and it's going to sit there. We've put into the plan, too, and John is working the budgeting. It's about six-something to demolish it. I want to demolish it. I don't want it to become an eyesore. I don't want it to become a place where people we don't want to congregate to congregate. The Strand, we are looking at state money to demolish that. I'd like to, by the fall, the summer, excuse me, have those demolished, have at least a green area of a park while we market it across from the pond. And it will not be an eyesore. It'll be, again, uh, an asset. Now, I'll tell you over at the Express, because of your vision to, to lease that building, and we made sure it worked. We didn't just buy it. We did a two-year lease. But we also, the last year of the lease, all of the lease payments go toward the purchase price. John's listed it. We didn't ignore it. It says right there, 660 to purchase it if we want in two years. But that spot, 1.7 acres, not only allows us to do the standalone uh, for the assessors, and we have vaults there. It's very secure. The back area is going to give us about 60 parking spaces. The back of town ha hall has about 65 to tell you the size of that. You saw the amount of people that come to the Enfield market in the summer. They're parking all over God's creation. We'll fill that parking lot every weekend, but also that allows us now, when we do stand at Dalbridge, to have the tournament class basketball and for other sporting facilities and theater, people will actually be able to park there 
and get in and not be frustrated and also access other times of the year the Higgins Park. Now what we're going to do, this is a program, we kept it as I can tell you, we showed everything. You'll see the detail, I hope you approve it. And then that will free us up now to look in the budget to say what improvements we can do. I want to do the transfer station we talked about with Mr. Kiner and others. I want to start to begin at Higgins Park to clear that parking and add it to Town Hall and some other infrastructure that we need, all within our fiscal responsibility to the taxpayers this year. Um, I'm hoping to have a repeat of last year. I can't promise anything. It's a little too soon. We have to see what the state does and what the Board of Ed does. But um, this town has been fiscally well run. And even with COVID, I think we are in good shape. I'm not going to get into all the other businesses that are coming into town, the increase in building permits and revenues, uh, the companies that are coming into town. Um, I think we are in very solid fiscal shape to be able to engage and embark on this project, which is going to save a lot of money. And I can't thank staff enough. And not only those you heard from tonight, um, all of the directors, you know, police has input on these, uh, libraries does, all of the directors, we work as a team. Everybody um, has a, a, some skin in the game and everybody contributed to this. Um, we've talked to all the stakeholders and I'm sure there'll be bumps along the way and some unexpected challenges, but boy, I think it's a heck of a start. So with that, I will open it up to general questions, and as I say, you'll have the 40-page document tomorrow, and we'll put it back on from 6 to 7 for the 16th to get in any in-depth uh, questions and see if you want to give it the green light then. Uh, Councilor Ungar? Um, I was just wondering um, if all the department heads, they all concurred with this move and that you have their support? Yes, um, we we're, we're, well. Yes, we've talked to everybody. Kosh has met with all the directors, um, and even if I didn't, if I thought it was the appropriate thing to do, I would recommend it to you. We're never going to get 100 percent. Somebody may get a smaller office. Somebody may be a little further from the bathroom. So um, I try to be very inclusive, um, but I don't run the town. It's unlike you running for office. It's not a democracy. But I try to get as much buy-in because without it it wouldn't work. Um, but so far, and I, I'll have all of our staff up there nod your head if you are all in favor of it, and the directors we've talked to. And I'm not close enough to give them a little whack, so I think it's sincere. <laughs> I, I have to tell you, I think, Lori, they are very excited. And to get the director of finance to actually be exuberant about something like this, to me, that's the stamp, the final stamp of approval. <laughs> Kelsey Sparazza. I know it's 7 o'clock, Chris, but I just want to say to you and to your staff, I don't think I've ever seen a presentation as thought out as this one was. In the beginning, I had a little heart palpitation because we were talking about closing the Al I mean, uh, the La Mania Center, and as you know, Thompsonville needs these things, but you know what? The kids are going to have two basketball courts, potentially, potentially a pool. Uh, the youth center is going to still be in Thompsonville. So the speed with which this is going to get done, the cost savings are real, um, the efficiencies in it. And you know, Chris, when you and I, uh, you were the public safety director, the chief, we would walk with the former manager downtown and we'd look at these things and say, someday, someday. If there's one thing that always frustrated me was how government didn't move. The Strand Theater should have been gone a long time ago, and I love that place. But the bottom line is, all these things are going to be done quickly, saving the town money and making it better for everybody. So um, I think, Chris, you've done more here than the last three town managers that I've seen. So. Thank you. For the record, potentially three basketball courts. When you think, when you yes, because we're doing Lafayette, off, yet, and, I think, and, and then the yeah. only one potential, I think, given the commitment and excitement about uh, Santa Dalberts, I think that would be yeah. the third, and that's tournament style, Chief, right. 10,000 square day. feet. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be incredible for the youth. Councilor Bosco? Well, Chris, you did it, I'll, and your staff did it. I did not want Fermi. I wanted it gone. And um, you know what? With this, pro, with this thing you got, it well makes sense to keep it. And, the, the, you know, you still don't have it factored in there about how much we're going to get from the properties that we're selling. So them numbers are nowhere near as bad as they even look. And then, you know, the yearly increases once we sell them. So I think this is really great. I'm, I'm very excited. I'm very thankful to everybody involved. And the only thing I've seen, and of course, my wife always says i got to have one bad thing to say, <laughs> is the garage going to be big enough 
Ten thousand square feet's not that big yeah, down at the. You get that question with the detail, all right? Yeah. Let's hold that because I mean. We're yeah, and we'll wait that. for the next one. And I'm sure. Uh, I'm that's sure. That's what I wanted. The to bring director it up of so public works is that. smiling, so I'm I'm glad. I'm sure he'd be glad to accommodate you and double the size. But we'll wait till the next time. So hold off. Again, we want to. We're getting late. We got to ask high level questions, Councillor Riley. So just real quick, can on the last financial slide that we had, are we going to get a little more in depth detail? Yes. Of like how much the buildings are going to sell, might sell for, and how much projected income could come down. Yeah, we put from what our real years. estate people told us for the yeah. two, two of the buildings. We're working on the third, and also we estimated uh, what the tax revenue would be. But there are very specific costs for every part of this: revenue side, expenditure, and then also what we're going to bring in. What I thought, I never try to promise more than we can deliver. We try to be conservative, so I didn't really try to ballyhoo and come here and tell the public, "Oh, we're going to save you all kinds of money." Even though I think we will, we want to be honest about what we're going to spend up front, yeah. and I know we're going to save money in the long run, but. We we try to balance it so that everything in that 40-page report, I think, will um, there be every answer to every question, hopefully, that you have. Okay, cool. Thanks. Councilor Mangini. Thank you, Chris, for a wonderful presentation. I'm actually looking forward to reading it. Um, but I do just have one quick question. Are we going to be leasing the gym? from the St. Adelberts? Is that the plan to That's a very it? good question, and, and I'm glad you reminded me because we wanted to dis the uh, high level if you want to proceed with it because Mr. Bellick is the one who gave us the price and was actually going to do it, so we have a couple of options. Okay. At the next meeting, we can explore them. If you want to go forward, we can either purchase it, and then there, the town attorney and legal will have to look at some of the sight line issues, okay. or if we wanted to uh, lease it long term, we could do that. Me. I like to buy and own what we have, especially on a, an asset like that. So that would be for us to purchase it, and then we'd have to work out some of the legal logistics, but I think it's doable once you tell us, give us the green light that we want to do Thank it. Thank you for that. And then that also I want question. to um, concur with um, Carl, uh, who uh, stated very nicely that you have done more in your tenure than the past, I don't know, three, four town managers that have been here. and. It's just amazing. Thinking out of the box, the creativity, I thank you for that. And I thank you, but I, I really have to say, and I'm not being humble, I, we, I have the most incredible directors and staff of any town in the state of Connecticut. They want to be here. They're enthusiastic. They do more and more work. My mother always used to say, if you want to get something done, give it to a busy person. When we interviewed, and we've hired almost all the people you see up there, I'm very proud of them. When they came in, I said, uh, you know, if you want to golf on Friday afternoons and take it easy, go to one of the area towns. If you want to work your bottom off, come to Enfield. And I also have to tell you this. I sat here during all of those managers, and the only reason I can get done what I did is because of all of you. You get a manager who's constantly, if he's going to be told, no, don't do that, we don't think so, his hands are tied. This council... I think shared my frustration coming in, like Carl did, seeing for so many years these things were talked about. You wanted action, and you gave us authority to do it, and that's why we're here today. It is a group. It, it, it takes all hands on deck to do these things, and we have a perfect team in place right now between the council and, and this staff. So I thank you, too. Thank you, sir. Councilor uh, Sakala, excuse me. Really, it's just that I have several questions. So before the next meeting, do you want all of our questions handed to you or do you want us to come prepared to ask them next meeting I think, I'd much rather just give you my questions. yes that's a very good point anything you see from the 40 give it to us whatever we can answer okay. before that meeting we will and then we'll open it up for six to seven just to sort of round table it and share the bigger because usually you have questions that everybody actually is interested in hearing the answers to uh, so we can share them at the six to seven but that's a good point okay. send, send them all to my you. office when you when you review it thank you anyone else Councilor uh, Crisati. Yeah, uh, great presentation, Chris. Uh, kudos to all of the uh, directors uh, for your creativity uh, in this project. Um, just, I just have one quick question uh, in this regards to uh, the D-Wing over at Fermi. Uh, did everybody take into effect that, uh, that there's a state program that's run over at Fermi, the CNA program that they have? It's a testing site for the state. I, I don't know that. Uh, we'll defer, and that's one of the ones we'll have the answer for next time. Uh, they pretty much did hands, uh, I mean, boots on the ground to investigate all these sites, and they also talked to the Board of Ed. So I am hopeful that they've taken into account, and we certainly will before we proceed, and we'll have an answer at the next meeting. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Pronounced.
You know, and again, you know, Chris, thank you to you and your staff. And I think, you know, I think we've talked about this for three years where, you, you know, we debate things and we, we talk about direction and what we want to do. And, and the facilities committee, which we reestablished four years ago, joint board of ed, town council, deputy mayor Suzak, Councilor Riley, Councilor Sakala, again, spending all that time in all those buildings, all the discussions with your staff, with consultants, with, with board of ed members, with members from the public as well who serve in that committee. Uh, it's 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 funny when I, you, you look at all the stuff that's been done and where we're at. You're right. It, it actually it's amazing when someone says you're not getting anything done. Well, there's there's domino effects when you do this stuff, and especially if you look at the where the pieces were moving in your presentation. That's what I appreciate. That again, we've put a lot of thought, both from a town perspective, from a committee perspective. We're involving the board of education in, in this as well. So this isn't just someone who you know I got a grand scheme and I'm doing it all on my own. The, again, your staff did exactly. You listened, again, your staff listens to the debate that's going on on the council floor. They implement, they understand what it is, then they implement it, and that's the point of the project. And so that's how it's supposed to work, in my opinion. Again, I, you can certainly disagree with me, but if local government's gonna work, or any level of government at this point, that none, none of it seems to work anymore, if you don't talk to each other and have some honest debate, and then adjust, Deputy Mayor Suzak, I mean, they've adjusted this year what we've had to do with some of our projects. We're gonna be talking about the roofs later. I mean, all the things that we've had to adjust. It, it's, it's interesting that people don't recognize that, well, there's little, sometimes you make little moves on a chessboard so you can do the checkmate when it's time. And I think right now, knock on wood, I, I appreciate the detail. You know, and again, I understand, for me, the, the biggest thing is, you know, Alcorn is a beautiful building. Or Al Alcorn's a beautiful piece of property. And I know there's people still in town who call it Info High, as they should. And now that where that court's gonna go, people don't realize in the back part of that property how beautiful little section that is. Near the, you know, when you go to Garden Street and everything else, we're developing it and we're bring, we listened. This is the point I wanna make. We were at a meeting, I know you were there with me, I can't remember what it was, maybe it was three years ago, and people were saying, you know, hey, you guys took away my basketball court, Alcorn. And it bothered us. I remember the conversation we had. And guess what? We listen. We may not be able to do it tomorrow, but we get there. And again, I, for me, redesigning out because it's a beautiful building and new services should be with the Board of Education where they, you know, again, perfect match. And it's in perfect part of the town. It's still in Thompsonville, but in a beautiful old building that we're maintaining. So again, for me, that's the biggest piece of this, and I think it's great. Your staff did a great job, and again, uh, I just want to say, this is years of planning, and now it's, again, what we always talk about, the hardest part is implementation. So uh, I'm looking forward to implementation. Me too. And like I say, I thank you for the patience. Sometimes, as you say, it is dominoes, and people say, well, why are you doing the Enfield Express? Why are you doing a basketball? Well, we had the grand scheme, but it takes this time, and that's why I wanted to do it in phases. And some of the things, there are people who have, um, you know, fond memories of different buildings. And you have to, I think the biggest difficult choice is no one to hold them, no one to fold them. Luckily, they kept Alcorn and refurbished it, and look what we're going to get from it. I think getting the Enfield Express was a very good idea, but also Santa Dalbert's, you know, preserving that historical site and making it into a beautiful center and then getting rid of some facilities that have served as well but as I say now we're just cost too cost prohibitive um, and I, I again I thank the staff they didn't like you said we didn't just throw this on the wall we had to come back to the drawing board quite a few times to say no that's not going to work talk to this director talk to these folks go out there look at it it was very thoughtful and as I said I think you'll be impressed with the details because the details are there we got into the weeds and that's why we're in a position to be able to implement this um, as quickly as the next meeting if you give us the green light so I, I thank you all very much for your support thank you sir again thank you to the staff everyone who's who's out in the tv land jeff kasha donald john if i'm missing Lori nelson and and of course attorney talberg um we're gonna end the, we're gonna give a quick two two minute break i have a motion to adjourn a special meeting Mueller. by council Mueller, second by council sakalos in favor of say aye folks we'll be back in two minutes quick recess if you have to and then we'll be back at seven seven fourteen
Good evening, everyone. Um, this is, I'm sorry for the uh, little delay, but we had a very big presentation from six to seven. Uh, this is the regular meeting on Monday, January 4th, 2021 of the Enfield Town Council. It is 716 and uh, prayer, Councillor Crisati, please. Everyone, please rise. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and Happy New Year to everybody. And today's blessing. As we look forward to a brand new year, let us not forget all that we have witnessed in 2020. May we bless and continue to help our neighbors in Enfield, especially those in need physically, mentally, and emotionally. May we bless our first responders, our volunteers, our essential workers, our town employees, and our educators as they continue to maintain and grow Enfield as a caring, thriving community. Please bless us as we continue to weather this unknown together, mourning and mending with those who have been hit the hardest. Please let us see when this is over that we have come together to be the best for our community, moving it forward, for it is in tough times that we must invest in Enfield to bring it to a better future. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to, the to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and, to and to the republic, republic for which it stands, stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice for all. Uh, roll call, please, Suzanne. Councillor Crisotti. Present. Councillor Hendler. Here. Mayor Ludwig. Here. Councillor Mancini. Here. Councillor Muller. Here. Councillor Riley. Here. Councillor Sraza. Here. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Here. Councillor Ungar. Here. Councillor Bosco. Here. Councillor Sakala. Here. There's 11 members present that are absent. Thank you, Suzanne. Moving on to item four, the fire evacu uh, uh, evacuation announcement. Case of a fire, we have an uh, exit in the back of the, the building. Please exit orderly left or right out the doors or to our built the doors to our left and, and to some councillors right. First door out the when you leave the door, first door to the left, down the stairs, and out into the parking lot in case of a fire. Moving on to item five, the mi minutes of the preceding meetings. Do I um, do I have a motion to approve the special meeting of December twenty first, two thousand twenty, by Councillor Mangini, second by Councillor Mother. Is there any additions, deletions, subtractions? Hearing none, by show of hands. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Ten in favor and one abstention. Suzanne. Moving on to the regular meeting of December 21st, 2020, I have a motion to approve. Move. Move. Second. By Councillor Riley, seconded by Councillor Muller. Is there any additions, deletions, corrections of the minutes? Hearing none, by show of hands, all those in favor? Opposed, abstentions? Ten in favor, one abstention, Suzanne? Uh, special guests, we have none. Correct. Moving on to public communications, we currently do not have anyone here. Moving on to item eight, Councillor <laughs> Communications. Councillor Mangini. Uh, has the floor. Go ahead, Councilor. I, I just ahead, wanted to wish everyone Happy New Year, safe, prosperous, and I also would like to request through our mayor, to our town manager, um, if we could have uh, Patricia from the health department come at some point, one of our council meetings, getting requests from the public, and I think it would also be beneficial for all of us to understand where we are with the COVID situation and how the state is um, administering the vaccinations and a little bit more um, disclosure, a uh, little education. I think it would be beneficial. And I do want to thank our governor and our uh, town, especially staff, for doing a superb job in keeping our workers safe and helping us, you know, work with the um, rules and regulations. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else have any communications? Hearing none, we move right on to item nine, the town manager communications. Oh, I'm sorry, I apologize. Donna, I didn't see you. Donna has a council on item eight. Sorry, go right, right ahead, my bad. That's all right. No, first, can you give an update on the railroad? Can you give an update on the railroad? Railroad tracks on, um, I guess right now they're going through Abbey Road and they're going on Hazard Avenue. I mean, we had no activity for probably 
I don't know, I don't ever remember yeah. seeing <laughs> decades maybe, Joe. And now they're busy as bees there, but man, that road was bad before. It is horrendous right now. Or Yes. Well, actually, and also where Abby meets um, Bradbrook, is, it's really bad. It's just really bad. And also, I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules and move items E, F, G, H, and I to miscellaneous and proceed to vote. So before we have F, A, G, H, and I, E is so been removed, so, so we just, it's F, G, H, and I. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Motion made, uh, items F, G, H, and I. I have a motion to suspend the rules by Deputy Mayor Suzak, second by Councilor Mothers. Any conversation on the motion? By a show of hands, all those in favor? Opposed abstentions, 11 in favor, Suzanne, zero against the motion. You have the floor, are you okay? Sorry. I'm all set now. Yeah, sorry, anyone else before we move on? Now, official, Count Town Manager, number nine, Town Manager Report. Thank you. Uh Mr. Mayor and uh, councilors, uh, just to respond uh, briefly at this juncture to Cindy, we will extend the invitation to Patrice Sulik. We had spoken previously. Um, as you can well imagine, she's incredibly uh, busy and overwhelmed at this juncture planning for the um, inoculations and vaccinations. Uh, we've been in constant touch with her. She is, and we participate in the mayor and others of our staff every Thursday morning on a call with her and our uh, North Central Health District region for updates. Kosh was on a call today. The governor had about his plan that he will be unveiling about the next steps of vaccinating Connecticut. And I will just tell you, we've been good partners with Patrice. Uh, we've actually offered space uh, to help do the vaccinations if that would help her uh, from her current location. And we've done that in the past when we've offered it to employees. And also, you may not have seen a, a memo I uh, disseminated this afternoon. Aaron Riggett, our chief of EMS, has been talking to Patrice. As you know, with this vaccine, they've got to observe people 15 minutes after they give the vaccine, and sometimes they were short of staff. Uh, because the next phase, the Department of Health will be doing our essential workers and residents. Uh, Patrice had asked if we might be able to help once or twice a month to have an EMS personnel who qualifies to assist and I I know the council would have supported it so I, I went ahead and sent that to you and said uh, without any objection we would do that to help our essential workers and our residents so we have a good working relationship and we'll see if we can get her uh, uh, for one of the next upcoming meetings depending on her schedule um, well I thank you all what I have really only one item and I think it's really bittersweet um, but very important um, this evening, we have, as you've noticed, Susanna Lechney, our town clerk, is with us, but she technically uh, retired on December 31st. Um, Suzanne started with the town in 1977 as a part-time clerk typist, and she was appointed uh, town clerk uh, April 25th, 1988. She has been with the town well over four decades, and it's just a testament to her commitment and dedication to her hometown where she lives and raised her family that she would be here because due to certain circumstances, uh, we have interviewed and we've offered a, a job with her assistance and input to a new town clerk, but the, it's not gonna occur till February, and because of some staffing in her office, we asked, uh, uh, we know you retired, Suzanne, but would you do the next two town council meetings in January? And true to her form and her kind spirit, she agreed to do it. We're fortunate. I have to tell you, I, I've known her for all, well, most all of the years um, she's been here, and she's been here longer than I have. And I can tell you that she is so highly respected. She's beloved, not only by all of our directors and employees, but our, our, our residents. Um, I get more compliments about Suzanne and the time she takes and her staff her beautiful way, never raising her voice, never losing her cool. I'd like to say I taught her that, but you all know that, that that's too far from the truth. But really, never, never losing her cool and helping people in stressful situations. You don't realize across the board how many lives the town clerk uh, effects from recording documents in real estate closings her keeping all of that going during COVID, where people had to get in and record things accommodating them then we all know what she went through i really would say one of the most difficult but high points of her career was doing the absentee ballots and the remote voting in this last presidential election which was just a huge undertaking she did it flawlessly and in good cheer uh, no one deserves a healthy and long retirement more than Suzanne, so we wanted to recognize her this evening. And I know that we're going to show we had this one print, and the council, on behalf of the council and the grateful town, 
we're going to present this to Suzanne and we'll give it to her tomorrow that hopefully she'll hang in her home here in Enfield and look back upon her years here so fondly as we think of her and remember her with great love and affection. So I'd like to say to Suzanne, thank you, Suzanne, for all of your uh, selfless efforts as town clerk, your patience, your kindness, and God bless you and have a healthy, wonderful retirement. Thank you, sir. Suzanne, I don't want to put you on the spot, but uh, anything you'd like to say? I mean, uh, the reward retirement doesn't really, we heard that a lot here, but people seem to hang on. <laughs> we, we just sort of hate to leave. That's all when it comes right down to it. It's just very nice, the years that I've worked here. I, I couldn't have had a better experience. It's been wonderful knowing all of you, meeting every council member, has just proven to me how important the town is to all of you over the years. And also the people who work in the administration, they're, they're just great people. I think we're all very, very fortunate. And I'm gonna miss you all, but I'm looking forward to staying home for a little while too. Thank you all very much. And I think for the, the people know that that is our last watercolor photo and there is not, oh, a, more, wow. there's not a more appropriate individual <laughs> to who should be getting it than Suzanne Olnicki. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's these, these are Thank one you. of those little little things that we do in this town that are special. That's a beautiful photo, it, and um, so Suzanne, you obviously earned it. And uh, I mean, really, I'm, we're glad that you actually have the final photo. It's actually very appropriate, in my opinion. Thank you very much. Anyone else? I've known Suzanne for a long time. I actually grew up with her daughter, so I've known her for a long time. Suzanne, thank you. Thank you, sir. Anything else from the town manager report? No. Um, I would just like to say that we concluded last Sunday, um, pursuant to our contract, our uh, indoors Enfield Farmers Market. It was, again, a remarkable success uh, on short order, having never, having never done it before. Uh, as I told you, in the summer market, uh, both the uh, people who were attending it and supporting it asked if we could continue it indoors, as did the vendors. You all know we started uh, last July with probably about 20. And with COVID, we were unsure if we'd even get people to come to it. And by the end, we had to extend it through October, which we hadn't uh, planned on doing. Uh, we had over 80 vendors there. We started at the uh, square to do indoor. I thank Namdar, our partners there, who let us use the square at no cost. And their um, manager was so helpful in arranging this with Connie Preventure and Danielle in our offices. And uh, again, we started with about 30 or 40 vendors and we ended uh, just before Christmas with over 80. So we're very happy. I thank everybody, Connie, for her uh, ingenuity with it, her dedication, her assistant, Danielle, Kasha, Lori, and Debbie worked very hard on it as well. And we're gonna come back bigger, better, and stronger summer of 2021 on the town green and hopefully expand it even a little further. So we look forward to that. And uh, we thank all of the uh, residents and people from the region who came and supported it. Any Council on I just wanted to thank you for allowing the uh, farmer's market to move indoors at the mall. And uh, it's great of Namdar to let all the people come. And it was a great success, great turnout. And I know Connie worked really hard with everyone and I exhibited there myself. So uh, thank you very much. Anyone else have any questions for the town manager? Hearing none, thank you, sir. Moving on to t item 10, the town attorney report, attorney Talbert. Uh, yes, yes, good evening, Mr. Mayor and members of the council and happy new year. Uh, we had a busy holiday uh, season. There wasn't really a holiday break in our office. We had um, last week, within the past uh, week, two uh, emergency status conferences with Judge Berger about the emergency request for a temporary injunction that I referenced at our last council meeting concerning a property at 117 North Maple. We we're supposed to have a trial on that this afternoon and tomorrow, but it looks like we're very close to have a resolution of at least the injunctive part of that case. Uh, so we're gonna be back with the judge uh, later this week. And perhaps at some point in the near future, I can brief you an executive session uh, the rest of what we did over the holidays is not really fit for public discussion, and so that's the extent of our report. Thank you, sir. Any questions for the town attorney? Hearing none, thank you, sir. Happy New Year. Yeah. Moving on to item 11, the reports of any special committees of the town. There is, Councilor Muller. I spoke to Patrice late today. It was around 4.30. Um, there's a special program called V-Safe that everyone is provided when they get vaccinated. It actively tr uh, tracks them for a week and then reduces frequency in order to pro provide information to the manufacturer. 
if anyone reports an adverse side effect to Patrice, uh, she has a form that they are required to submit and fill out, not only for the vaccine, but anything, the flu, anything vaccine that they get. Uh, we've done approximately 110 vaccines so far. Um, how much of the vaccine is available and who is in the next groups or groups is decided at the state level. And anyone can go to ct.gov. The estimate for starting the next phase of eligible people is anywhere between January and May. So it's, it's really hard to tell. It's like a moving target right now. Uh, there are many partners engaged in the vaccination and the, her staff are ready to scale up or down and pivot relatively quickly to serve our community. Thank you. Similar to Councilor Zuccala's questions earlier about sending questions to Chris. Yep. Everyone, Cindy, I'm sorry, Councilor Mangini and Councilor Mullers are representatives to the North Central Health District. Feel free to send them questions if you have. I know there's a lot of things going on. So I think it's easier for Patrice and her staff if we do it through a couple of folks instead of all of us. I know I'm sure we all hear our own questions, our own comments on what's going on. So if we could just maybe, uh, if you have questions, send them through Councilor Mangini and Councilor Muller. My only, you, since you mentioned the, is the form given to the individual when they get the vaccine or they have to actually go out and get it themselves? I could find out, I believe it's, it's, if it's reported to Patrice. Okay, so, call her so they don't, all right, so they actually have to submit the form to the manufacturer. All right, because I think we probably should be telling the individual when they get it, in my opinion, sorry. Okay. That's just, I mean, just, sorry, it's my opinion, not, nothing more than that. Any, any questions for, uh, on the Health Central for Councilor Muller? None? All set, sir? Deputy Mayor Suzak. Well, facilities will be back at it. <laughs> it's all we do. It really was great to see that and all the stuff integrated that has been going on for the past 10 years. So um, what they're gonna be starting is, um, you had the presentation by Green Bank and the Clean Energy Subcommittee has been meeting and um, they're gonna bring three properties to the facilities with their blessings to have Green Bank look at them. This is for solar. Um, it'd be at no cost to the town and no work for our staff. So with that, we'll be moving forward on that and we're gonna um, establish, um, I guess, either a subcommittee or we'll work on it the full committee, but we're gonna look at vestibules because vestibules need to be put on our schools um, and the windows. So. I know at one point, Brian gave me a choice. He said, you got $125,000, what do you want, a playscape or a vestibule? And I chose a playscape. <laughs> so um, maybe somebody else might have to chair that part of it. Um, so um, with that, um, I would like to um, say that West Hartford actually put on solar arrays and they are saving a quarter million dollars at their middle school with a solar array. So, we're gonna look at it and see what we get and bring it back to you. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else from the facilities committee? You guys good? Anyone else? Okay. Yes, sir, go ahead, yep. Sorry. Just uh, a reminder, we're gonna have a meeting for the uh, DPW for the trash. If anyone has any questions they need answered, please get a hold of me tomorrow. And if I don't have the answer, I will get it for you at Wednesday's meeting. Call them, call them willingly and often. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, anything else? Hearing none, moving on to item 12, old business. On page one, items A, one and two, there is none. Moving to the top of page two, items and old business, items three through 14, there are none. Moving to the top of page three, item B, appointments for the town manager, council approved. Items one through 13, there are none. Moving to the top of page four, again, under old uh, business, Town manager approved, council, uh, town manager approved, council approved, 14 through 16, there are none. There are no C appointments from the Planning and Zoning Commission appointed, council approved. Item D, the MOU of the fire district stays on the table. Item 13, new business. Um, A, there is no consent agenda. Item B1 has been moved to miscellaneous. Item B2 stays on the table. Item B3 stays on the table, which again, these are appointments to Commission on Aging, Library Board of Trustees, and item B4 again. Um, uh, yeah, we have an appointment. Yeah, that, I know B1 has already been moved to miscellaneous. Okay. This, okay. Uh, I'm just saying these, have, yep, you're right. That's gonna be on miscellaneous. Uh, B, item B4, Library Board of, of Trustees, again, stays on the table. There are no appointments. Item C, appointments, town manager appointed, council approved, there are none. Item D, uh, appointments, oh, you didn't move. I'm sorry, you didn't move it on. I'm sorry, Councilor Mangini, you're right. I thought it was yeah. part of our. 
No, so, so, so I'm sorry, I always go to B1. I apologize, you, you are exactly okay. correct. Um, a reappointment of commission on aging, item B1. Do I have a nomination, please? Um, yes, I'd like to bring forward the uh, reappointment for Judy Kilty. Nomination okay. made. Second. Uh, by Council Mangini, second by Council Sakala. Do I have a motion to close nominations? Okay. By Council Sakala, second by Councilor Muller. All those in favor of closing nominations by show of hands. Uh, 11 in favor, zero against, Suzanne, and closing nominations. Uh, any discussion on the main item? Hearing none, roll call, please. Councillor Crisotti. Four. Councillor Hedler. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Mancini. Judy Kilty. Councillor Muller. Four. Councillor Riley. Four. Councillor Sraza. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzak. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakal. Judy Kilty. There's a loud in favor, none against, and no abstentions. Thank you, Suzanne. I apologize. We're going to B2, Commission on Aging Reappointment stays on the table. B3, Library Board, Board of Trustees stays on the table. And B4, Library Trustees Reappointment stays on the table. Item C, appointments under new business. Town Manager appointed, Council approved. There are none. Item D, P&Z uh, appointed, Council approved. Items D1 and 2, again, stay on the table. Item 14, items for discussion. Item A, there is no consent agenda. Item B, appointments, town council appointed, there are none. Item C, appointments, town manager appointed, council approved, there are none. And item D, um, P and Z, commission appointed, council approved, there are none. There is uh, no item E. Um, so F, G, H, and I have been moved to miscellaneous. J stays on the table, discussion resolution, authorizing the town manager to sign a real estate purchase on behalf of the town of Enfield for the sale of 92 Post Office Road, stays on the table. We'll move to new business next meeting. We move to item 15, which is miscellaneous. Item F, let me get there, sorry. Discussion resolution, item F under miscellaneous. Uh, request for transfer of funds to replace a portion of the Eli Whitney school roof at $235,550. Resolve that in accordance with chapter six, section eight F of the town charter, the following transfer is hereby made. From general revenue of appropriate fund balance of $235,550 uh, $550 to the general fund unallocated transfers of $235,550. Grant projects, so uh, we're getting grant money from the state grant project of 437450 dollars um, and $235,550 from the revenue general fund, moving it over to the G Eli Whitney School Construction Fund of, let me do the math, of, oh boy, um, zero, right at the, the minute, the 600, uh, I'm doing math on the fly here, so it's always dangerous, three, seven, 673,100 dollars, pretty good, uh, so that's the um, limit, uh, with including the grant fund money, certification approved that the funds are available, and John can correct my number math if I'm incorrect, of December 28, 2020, by our Director of Finance, John Wilcox, approved by our Town Manager, Christopher Bromson. Uh -huh. uh, Councilor Mahler, Second. seconded by Councilor Mangini. Um, so obviously, yeah, this is just a continuation of, uh, I don't know if John or you want to give any comments, but this is obviously, again. I do not. We covered it last time. John, I saw him when you were doing your math. He unmuted, then he remasked, so I guess he didn't disagree. I'm pretty good on the fly, John. Yeah, well, you're, that's one of your strong suits, Mayor. So uh, if he has nothing to add, then I guess we, you could proceed to vote. Any comments from any counselors? Again, this is just a combination of what we had the presentation at the beginning of the meeting. Again, the Joint Facilities Committee with the Board of Education, led by Deputy Mayor Suzak, Councilor Sakala, Councilor Riley, and our town staff. Again, continuing to move forward, adjusting based on the realities of what we've been through in the last year, but we're still getting this, these important projects underway. So well done to the Facilities Committee. Any other comments from anyone? Hearing none, roll call, please, Suzanne. Councilor Crisotti. Four. Councilor Hemler. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Mancini. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Councillor Riley. Four. Councillor Sferraza. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzette. Four. Councillor Ungar. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. There's 11 in favor, yep. none against, no abstentions. It's, we'll be ready next meeting. 
Moving on to item G under uh, miscellaneous discussion resolution request to transfer of funds to replace a portion of the Hasbro Memorial School roof at $235,550. Resolved in accordance with Chapter 6, Section 8F of the Town Charter, the following transfer is hereby made. From the general fund of $235,550 to the general fund on allocated transfers at $235,550. From grant projects, $437,450 and the uh, Two hundred thirty-five thousand five hundred fifty for a total of six hundred, uh, two hundred two six hundred seventy seventy-three dollars, six hundred seventy-three thousand dollars to the Hasbro Memorial Project Roof, uh, line item of six hundred seventy-three thousand dollars. Certified that the above funds are available as December twenty-eighth, two thousand twenty, by our Director of Finance John Wilcox, approved by our Town Manager Christopher Bronson, by Deputy Mayor Suzak, uh, seconded by Councilors uh, Mangini. Again, the any comments. Uh, Another big project underway, Deputy Mayor Suzak. Okay, everybody, that is the referendum limit. So, yep. you know, we're gonna look to do the most that we can do, and hopefully the Eli Whitney can be done in two phases. I mean, that that's our hope, but I keep saying, you know, maybe the grand list will grow and we'll get a little more money. Hmm. <laughs> Any other comments? Here on roll call, please, Suzanne. Councilor Crisotti. Four. Councilor Hemler. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Mangini. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Councillor Riley. Four. Councillor Sparaza. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzette. Four. Councillor Ungayer. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. There's 11 in favor, none against, no abstention. Thank you, Suzanne. Moving on to item. Um, H, under miscellaneous, discussion resolution, resolution to settle a pending property tax appeal, a Huntington, Huntington Chase development. Resolve the Enfield Town Council does hereby authorize the town attorney, James N. Talberg, or his designee to settle the outstanding tax assessment appeal in the following action. Huntington Chase Development, LLC versus Town of Enfield, docket number HHB-CV-20-606, 1046S. The fair market value of the property known as 160 has it have to be four million eight hundred fifty thousand and zero dollars. Office approved by the Office of the Town Attorney in December twenty second, two thousand twenty. So moved by Councillor Muller, seconded by Councillor Mangini. Uh, Attorney Talberg, I don't know if I, I will turn over to you if you have any comments. I feel free. Sure, Mr. Mayor. I would just note that this is a uh, resolution, a negotiated resolution through Council of a pending tax appeal was brought against the town and filed in the Superior Court. Uh, the, the resolution was negotiated by Assistant Town Attorney Mark Serrato with the town's tax assessor. And for the reasons that we discussed in executive session at the last meeting, we fully uh, endorse and recommend approval of this resolution. Thank you, sir. Any questions from members of the council? Hearing none, roll call please, Suzanne. Councilor Crisotti. Four. Councilor Hemler. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Mangini. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Councillor Riley. Four. Councillor Sparaza. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzanne. Four. Councillor Ungayer. Four. Councillor Bosco. Four. Councillor Sakala. Four. There's 11 in favor, none against, no abstentions. Thank you, Suzanne. Moving on to item I under miscellaneous, it's a discussion resolution authorizing social services, social services to establish a revenue account and to utilize funds for the procurement of heating fuel and gas for eligible families. Whereas the impact of the pandemic has left some working families negatively impacted financially. Whereas the Alpha Delta Kappa teacher sorority has identified this population as one of which they would like to make donations to assist with the procurement for heating fuel and gas during the cold winter weather season this year, whereas any unspent donations are to be used in the cold weather season next year for impacted working families. Resolved that the town manager or his designee is authorized to establish the revenue account of 2204614417050 for the Alpha, Delta, Kappa teacher sorority donations to be used to procure heating fuel and gas for eligible working families negatively impacted by the pandemic. Submitted by our Director of Social Services, Cindy Guerrero, on December 28, 2020. So moved. By Councillor Muller, seconded by Councillor Riley. Uh, is Cindy on or Kasha? No, Kosh is uh, available, our Assistant Town Manager, uh, to answer any questions on this if you have any. Welcome, uh, have an I know Kasha, if you want to make any comments or just want to make sure anything, you have the floor. 
Sure, good evening. Um, so as you heard, the Alpha Delta Kappa Teacher Sorority um, has identified um, that they would like to donate funds uh, to ALICE families in NPL, and ALICE stands for Asset Limited Income Constrained Employed. So this is uh, the working for the working people who are at, still working actively but struggling to make ends meet. Um, and uh, based on their website, it seems that a third of Connecticut families actually are Alice families, so working but unable to uh, cover expenses. And these uh, families actually are not eligible for state assistance uh, for the IHE program they would not be eligible for. Um, the donation will likely be anywhere between $300 to $1,500, um, and it will be administered by social services. It will be first come, first serve. Thank you, Kasha. Uh, any questions from anyone? Councilor Riley. Um, I've worked with the ladies of Alpha Delta Kappa before through First Readers and their great organization. I was just wondering if um, this account that we're establishing will allow normal citizens to donate funds into it as well to add to the pot of money that the Alice families can use. Kasha, I don't know if you heard that question. I think I did. I did hear the question. I am unable to answer that. I'm not sure if Mr. Wilcox. Yeah, I was going to say maybe John that. can, or he can get he can get back to us if he knows offhand. He can opine. There he is. Um, we originally established it as they would, but I don't understand if if somebody else uh, right. wanted to donate with the same uh, stipulations that we could use that account for those as well. I agree with you, John. I think that's probably correct, but if, I don't know if we have, we have to verify it. I mean, this is a great program, and first of all, I want to thank Alpha. I, I want to make sure I get it right. Alpha Delta Kappa Teacher Sorority for doing this, because I mean, that's that's a the working whether it be a single uh, family or even could even be a multifamily uh, that is you know struggling that is but is working and wants to to do the right thing and pay their taxes and work for a living. This is a huge program. And I, I hope maybe through them, I mean, I want to make sure they get the credit. Can we expand this program to, again, because I know there's a need in town and we've, I think some of us went to this, uh, I don't want to say it was training, but program last year when it came to Alice through the United Way. And there, I mean, before the pandemic, so it's, it's not even talking about the pandemic, people were, work, were still working and were struggling to make ends meet. This is an important program. So I, I a, uh, you know, Councillor Riley, if there's a way maybe we can figure out through Kite or whatever to expand it to see if other people will donate. It's a great program. So I don't know, Kasha, if I can throw that at you and maybe reach out. You know, we'd love to, we'll partner with Alf, you know, again, the sorority, because it's there, you know, we're going to give them the credit for doing this. But there definitely is a need in this town. Sure, we will definitely, I'll speak with uh, the Director of Social Services tomorrow and John um, to understand uh, what we can do with this. Yeah. Again, I appreciate social service understanding there's a need. I mean, that's the other thing is there, and then that we're trying to do something about it. So it's great. Anyone else have any questions or comments? Hearing none, roll call, please, Suzanne. Councillor Crisotti. Four. Councillor Hemler. Four. Mayor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Mangini. Four. Councillor Muller. Four. Councillor Riley. Four. Councillor Sraza. Four. Deputy Mayor Suzanne. Four. Councillor Undyer? Four. Councillor Bosco? Four. I'm sorry. Councillor Bosco? Four. Councillor Sakala? Four. There's 11 in favor, none against, no abstentions. Thank you, Suzanne. Moving on to item 16, public communications. Again, there is none. Any item 17, any councillor communications? Councillor Mangini. I just want to wish Suzanne happy, healthy retirement. <clears throat> And Suzanne, it's been a pleasure knowing you all these years, and you have done a super, super job for our town, and God bless you. Well said. Anyone else have any? Councillor Muller. Hi, Suzanne. I want to congratulate you as well. Who's going to keep us all in line? It's an honor to know you, and thanks for all you've done to keep us going. Thanks. Good luck. Thank you. Council Deputy Mayor Suzak. First, Suzanne, enjoy your retirement. Sometimes it's hard to stay retired. <laughs> um, I guess this is... Uh, a question I have through the when are we having our next WPCA meeting? I don't want to get into budget and we haven't looked at a lot of things. I know we did have that subcommittee at one time and I hate to give more work to the facilities. I'm sorry, Gina, but that was what the subcommittee was and 
you know, if we need to, to be vetting some stuff, I think, you know, we, we, can we had a big rate increase, we we're getting ready for bonding, and we're finishing up the project. I think it might behoove us to, you know. Good, we can talk about scheduling that tomorrow. We'll get an update. As we said, we should be close to also concluding the project, and it will dovetail nicely to give a report and uh, we get the most complaints about the PCA yes, than anything else. So thank you. You're welcome. Councilor Hamler. Uh, congratulations, Suzanne. The town hall will not be the same without you. Councilor Ungar. Suzanne, it was my pleasure to work with you uh, these few years. I'm really going to miss you. And best wishes for your retirement. I hope you can uh, entertain yourself and do something fun. Councilor Cassati. Yeah, Suzanne, uh, congratulations on, on your retirement, and I definitely have appreciated all of your hard work throughout the years and, and working with you uh, and your dedication to the town of Enfield. Uh, best wishes to you. Councillor Sparazza. Suzanne, uh, like everyone else, I wish you success and health, and um, all the years we worked together when I was with the town, you were always there for me and, and for my department, so uh, God bless you and uh, stay healthy. Well, since, since that she's retired, she could be sticking around for a while, yeah. <laughs> Don't scare her, man. Let me work, let me work in increments. Councilor Vasco. Thank you, Suzanne. You've always been great, even before I was a council person. You always treated everyone with respect, and... Uh, you were something that made this town where it is. Thank you. I agree. I agree. She could be one of the most respected individuals in this town, no doubt about it. Well said. Well said by everyone. And in closing, I, just, I mean, the good news, I, I just want to reiterate to everyone, our agendas have been small lately because of all the work that you folks did from August to November. I mean, we have not slowed down at all from the staff's perspective, who have been working their rear ends off, and to your perspective of we've had huge agendas since September and August. And so good news is we're knocking wood a little bit ahead of the game, even through a pandemic. So that's a credit to each of you. I know a lot of you still do a lot of your work on your own subcommittees, specifically this facilities committees. You saw some of the output tonight. So again, I, I know, you know in, in this day and age, it's things get a little, people forget just to say thank you, but really people don't realize how much work each of you in your own way have done and we are, I mean, the presentation tonight shows that, man, we are on the front foot through difficult situ uh, situation. We're not using it as an excuse. We're trying to find different ways. We're pivoting. The staff is pivoting. And knock on wood, you know, we're going to be maybe stronger than we were before, which I know not a lot of communities talk that way. But that's a credit to you folks. And, again, everyone here who, again, we put a ton of work in over the last six months, and it shows really in the agendas. So we're not having agendas all the way up to item Z, you know, because we did a lot of work earlier. So well done, everyone. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That's much appreciated, and I echo that sentiment. And I would just like to say, you know, we, we sort of forget and take things for granted. If you look back uh, six, seven, eight months ago when we were trying to do these meetings, we had technical glitches, and we had feedback, and people couldn't hear, and we had people getting cut out. I would just like to thank Paul Russell from IT, and tonight Alex Kiner, who now it's interactive to the point that all the folks at home were able to see us and see you, what makes it, and Donna's nodding her head, and anybody who's done it remote, it's kind of disconcerting when you can't see the other group. So it's just amazing to see how far we've come, and that enable, uh, enables us to get together and do these meetings without, as you said, missing a beat. And in some ways going forward, we're going to be better off. It's going to make us more efficient. We're going to be able to do emergency meetings or meetings if there's a storm uh, that we couldn't do before. And it gives us a lot of flexibility, and I think, uh, really, that has been a silver lining. Great. So I'd like to thank them for all of their efforts on our behalf. Happy New Year, everyone. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. By Councilor Muller, seconded by Councilor Sprouse. All those in favor, say aye. aye. Happy New Year, everyone. Good night. Good night.